Hi, it's Oscar. Welcome to another How with ServiceNow. In this episode, I'm going to show you a new version of my Delegates widget that I developed. In the previous episode, the out of the box Delegate form view was leveraged. This time, I built two custom widgets to add the capability for all users to manage their own Delegates. For this example, I have opened this, uh, two windows for the same instance. One is uh, my user, and the other one is Apple Tutor. So if I go now to my delegates and both uh, windows, I'll see that none of them, none of these users have any delegates yet. So it is very simple to just click on new you get the pop-up window because Apple Tutor is not an admin. Um, it's going to have the user field read only. So it's totally locked for him. And here I can type and say, well, I want Oscar to be my delegate from today. Maybe until the 20th. And I want him to go for my approvals, my assignments, uh, CC notifications and everything. So I want the whole package and then I click save. And then this will successfully create a delegate record with all the information we just entered and all the checkboxes checked. Um, I have the option, of course, to remove it. I no longer need this particular delegate. Now, if I go to the first window and refresh, I see now that I have a delegated to me. So Apple Tutor in my user profile have delegated to me his approvals, assignments, notifications, and meeting invitations. It is very simple in such way that um, we can just click on new. And now because my user account does have admin it means i can select any other user i want if i need to but then uh, i'll do the same thing for example for apple i will select apple tutor then we'll choose the 30th um sorry i just click away from that window when you click away, uh, the pop-up window just closes. So on the 30th, and we can say maybe on February the 15th, okay? And then uh, I'm gonna select just uh, meetings and approvals. That's all I need from Apple. So now I just added my delegate Apple Tutor for approvals and notifications. If I go here on Apple profile and I reload this page, then I'll see now um, delegated to me is exactly the record I just created. And here, of course, you cannot delete because it's not up to you. It's up to the, the delegator uh, whoever created the delegate record is the only one who can remove the record. This is just informational for the users to understand what, um, what attributes from this, from approvals, assignment, notifications, and meeting invitations have been enabled for that particular delegate, right? So this is just uh, read only and then you you're able to see all this information and of course you can create as many delegates as you need to right so you can have multiple users to delegate for different um, attributes or all of them it's up to every user and if i no longer need uh, that particular record or um, delegate record then i can simply just click on remove I get a confirmation window, I click OK, and then it's gone. If I go back to Owl Tutor, then I'll see that 
that particular record is gone. Okay, now it's time to take a look on the code, what, um, what I have done in this development for the widget. So I'm going to select the widget in editor, and this will open the new tab, and it will load the exact um, widget that I've just created. On the server side, what, um, what we're doing here is basically querying um, all the delegates for the current user in session. So we get the current user in session, then we do a glide record on sys user delegate with that given user on the session where the delegate is not the same user as in session and then uh, we order by descendant order uh, with the field ends. And then we just loop under each and every delegate. We, we create an object. We store all the um, definition and each and every attribute for that given object as uh, the user display value, the user ID, the delegate display value, the delegate ID, the sysid of the delegate record, the starts and ends dates, and, and those attributes, approvals, assignment, invitation, which uh, are meetings, and notifications. And we do the same thing to get my delegators. So I want to understand if I'm a delegate of someone else, right? So I'm going to query the same table, but the um, uh, query is going to be a little bit different. And then I will loop of, all over those delegators and as well create another object with that, with all, with each and every of those records. Then what we're doing in the client script or the uh, controller is we have to find an event for open the delegate form. When we click on the new button in the form, so a pop of windows show up, right? It's open. So we basically using SP model and the open function, we're passing the title, the widget name or ID of the widget for that pop up window, the buttons that we need, which is going to be uh, cancel and save and save is going to be the primary and cancel is going to be true here, this attribute. And then we have a shared data. So the shared data is basically an object that is being populated with the current delegate data. So that means the record we're uh, attempting to modify is going to be loaded on the current delegate data. And then, of course, we have confirmation. If, if uh, we want to cancel, then it's not going to do anything. Otherwise, it's going to transport the data when the primary button, which means save button, has been clicked. And then we are going to say the action is going to be create or edit. So because we are using the same form, the same pop-up window to create or edit. If we're editing, then we're getting uh, loaded all the fields with the data we just selected in the list. If it's a new record, because we click on the new button, then all the fields are going to be empty and then we can create a new delegate record. Okay, and then it goes for the server to update. So if we go back to the server script, we're seeing that if we have the transport data and the action is removed, then we would actually remove the, um, the delegate record. And we just show a message to saying that the delegate has been removed successfully. However, if the transport action is created or edit, then what we want to do is um, either an update or create a new delegate. Okay, so if it's an update, of course, we will have to. So each and every field would will be set if we have something, some value on the field in the form. So this is when we're doing an update. Of course, we would send the message that the delegate has been updated successfully. If it's not, if it's not an update, that means we want to create a new delegate record. So we have to initialize the 
the user delegate record. We get the delegate data, so all the information that it was input on the fields in the form, and then we just pass that along to each and every field from the record, and then we insert this new record. If we go back to my delegates on the portal, so if I want to modify an existing record, you see the hand pointer of the mouse. So you just have to click anywhere on the columns in order to open the form and it will load all the data as per the record selected. So here we can decide and say, well, you just uh, don't need the assignments or CC notifications. And then I hit save and immediately the delegate record gets updated. And of course I can see that now assignments and meeting invitations are not selected. If we now take a look on the delegate form widget, so on the server script, we're just catching the current login user for the display value and the ID. And we're making the user read only uh, false. But um, if it doesn't have any admin role, it's going to be true. So the user field is going to be read only if you don't have admin role. On the client script, we're getting the shared data passed from the other widget through the widget options shared object. That's how we pull it. And then we have a default object to be returned to the parent via the shared data as well. In case of a new data, so this is going to be the, the new object that we're going to return back. Uh, if an update happens, um, then the current delegate uh, it's going to be loaded from the data uh, to the model. So whatever we have done is going to be captured on these individual variables. If it's new, delegate. So uh, there's a new record to be created. Then we have the new delegate data. We have, of course, um, the scope user, which is um, a reference field that's why we have the display value the value and the name which is user same thing for delegate user for the start date for the end date as well and then we have some events or some functions events whenever anything is being changed so it's going to be safe either on the on the modified delegate data or on the new delegate data object depending if we're updating or modifying an existing um, delegate record or if we are creating a new one. And this is only using two custom widgets and of course a page to have the My Delegates on top of the menu in the home page of the service portal. This is something it can be leveraged, you can use it and it's a um, very good uh, widget to display all this information firsthand and easier for the end users to be able to manage their own delegates within the service portal. So I hope you enjoyed this, uh, try to test it yourself and give me some feedback on the comments below. You will find as well the code from the community for um, this uh, solution for the My Delegates. It's been a pleasure and thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.